What's good, everybody, man? Welcome into the Blue Bloods. We got a special guest today, new Mississippi Valley State running back coach, recruiting coordinator, run game coordinator. My guy, Coach Wyatt Anderson, is with us today. Coach, how you doing, man? And what's what's the vibe around Valley right now, man, now that you've gotten through National Signing Day? Zach, man, I appreciate you having me, having me on the show today. Zach, the thing is, I'm going to tell you is this. It's a very, very exciting time right now to be in one in Mississippi Valley State, two being the SWAC, three being the state of Mississippi. Um, more than happy to be here. Opportunity to come back to the state of Mississippi where I, one, got my high school degree from, my college education from. Um, couldn't be more excited. So before we get into, you know, the recruiting aspect of this, what was what led you to Valley? What was your relationship like with Coach Wade? What was the pitch to get you on the staff? And, and why did you feel like it was the right opportunity for you? So me and Coach Wade have been good friends for a very, very long time. I mean, this opportunity happened, I think, right around the time we played Murray State when I was there, still there at SEMO, was he gave me a call and said, hey, there might be something about to happen. It'd just be ready. So I said, Wade, I'm your guy. Let's get it on. Um, but, man, Coach Wade's a hell of a coach, very, very elite recruiter, developer of men, developer of athletes. Um, an opportunity to come work for a good friend of mine. Couldn't pass that opportunity up. And looking back real quick at your experience at SEMO, you got to work with, you know, we talked before the show, being a being a running back kind of guy, you got to work with one of the best in the FCS and Gino Hess. You got to work with a great staff with a lot of great guys. What was your biggest learning experience looking back throughout your time at SEMO? So the biggest thing for me is I worked on, I was actually the defensive quality control there at SEMO. Um, so I worked with the coach, the offensive scout team, and then um, being able to work with the top run defense and, one of the top run defenses in the FCS. Biggest thing in my time at SEMO, I had a lot of very, very good mentors. Um, starting with Coach Took. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I took notes on Coach, Coach Took every single day, and there's a lot of things that I'm going to take from Coach Took uh, whenever I do, when I'm very fortunate enough to be able to be a head coach. Um, coach Kuhn on there, right there's a defense coordinator, great leader of men, a great defensive mind. Coach Deron Steckle, who's now at Eastern Michigan, I mean, took me under his wing. I was able to learn from a my first time ever coaching on defense before. Um, Coach Smith, great learning experience with Coach Smith. Great, still talk to all these guys to this day. Um, Coach Darius Hicks did a great job with the corners as well. But great people. And the biggest thing I think I took from probably Coach Tuke is the importance of how important leadership is and how important it is that your players are completely bought in. Because, I mean, your culture is not what you put on the wall. It's what you bring to the work every single day when nobody's watching. I mean, we had that whole program with love, effort, attitude, and self-discipline over time. And we truly meant that. Yeah, and moving forward now, you're the running back coach, run game coordinator, recruiting coordinators. You're wearing a lot of different hats right now for Valley. But, you know, a lot of people understand what goes into being a positional coach. But there's a lot of people who watch the show who haven't been involved in athletics that don't really know exactly what a recruiting coordinator does. What does your day-to-day -day look like? What are your goals as a recruiting coordinator at Mississippi Valley State? So looking at some of our different roles and the part of beauty of being a college football coach is one, you wear a lot of different hats and a lot of different times. Um, so, I mean, there's days we're going to be a mentor. We're going to be a father figure. We're going to be a brother, whatever we need to at each individual time. And that's just being who you need to be as a leader for each individual person. Um, my roles as a recruiting coordinator is one thing is I try to wake up every single day and find a way to put Valley on the map in some different type of way. I mean, that's being somehow being on the cutting edge of social media um, what do we want to post on Twitter today? What do we want to do? Who can we get to uh, shout us out today? Different things like that. And biggest thing as a recruiting coordinator, I need to make sure that I always try to stay on top of, hey, we're, sure we're organized in terms of, hey, we have these dates for visits. This date's going to be our junior day. Um, and just make sure I stay up to date and know what's going on around campus so we can find a way to continue to put Mississippi Valley State in a positive light out, out there on social media. You guys did that. I don't know if you've seen. I'm sure, I'm sure you're kind of in tune. You had social, like you guys had social media going crazy over some of those recruiting videos where the, where the guys, you know, had the lights and in the locker room with the different helmets. I mean, people were going crazy. I mean, you guys had one of the best productions in terms of that. Was that was 
when you you guys relaunched a new social media site as well in terms of Twitter, as you and Coach Wade and the rest of the coaching staff talk, how do you guys plan to attack some of the, I guess, perceived challenges that people talk about coaching at Valley? A lot of people talk about how hard it is to recruit at Valley. When you guys are attacking the recruiting trail, how are y'all turning those challenges into to strengths for you guys on the recruiting trail? Well, the biggest thing is I'm going to stop you right there because we don't look at these as challenges. We look at these as opportunities. Um, people want – hey, I mean, Valley, Mississippi Valley State has been a sleeping giant for a very, very long time. Um, I mean, you look at some of the NFL players that came out of here, like Jerry Rice being the, the well-known one, Deacon Jones and another NFL Hall of Famer, Ashley Ambrose, um, just continue to name people off, going to continue to go down the list. Um, there's all, there's always going to, everybody's going to have, always have their opinions of what Valley is, but everybody always failed to talk about what Valley could be and what Valley will be. Um, I mean, we have, again, at the end of the day, recruiting is a relationship business and what my relationship is with this kid and this kid and this kid is what's going to ultimately I do believe help us either land this prospect or what's where else is he going to go I love that and you know I talked about when, when coach Wade was hired I was like you know hiring an alum in this situation is so important because he he's been there when Valley was successful and even there's a head coach who just got hired too over at North Carolina a Vincent Brown he knows what what Valley can be at, at the height of, of their reign. So I, I think I love your perspective on, you know, understanding, taking those quote unquote perceived challenges and looking at those as opportunities as strengths to improve on Valley. But as a recruiting coordinator, man, let's just be honest. Recruiting has been a madhouse these past few years as more and more changes are coming in. You got NIL, you got the transfer portal for you looking at recruiting over these past few seasons how much has the evolution of the transfer portal impacted yourself as a recruiter? And how have you had to adjust with all these different changes coming from the NCAA? So the biggest thing is either adapt or die. I mean, I hate to put it like so bluntly like that, but it's part of it as a coach. Um, it does change your timeline a little bit in terms of, okay, now I got to make sure I get these guys out of the portal by December. I want to bring in these guys to start class in January. Um, but there's also going to be another cycle in May. So if you really time it up right, you can still have a good start starting base in December with your high school, with your class of transfers, high school kids. And then at the end of spring ball, hey, there's another cycle open in May. Um, but at the end of the day, hey, it's however you want to build your side, you want to build your roster. I mean, you almost look at it like how you're the general manager on playing Madden or something like that, where, hey, this is how I want to continue to build my football roster is I want to have this many veteran guys at this position, this position, this position, this position. But you also have to make sure, and there's a lot of people I think, in my honest opinion, fail to the whole transfer portal. Yeah, it's easy to say we're going to get this team flipped overnight, but you have to remember you got to go out there and sign some high school guys or you're going to be after going out there trying to get a transfer every single year. Which yeah. that's where I think we did a really good job of with, our signing class is one, we did a good job evaluating and taking the right type of kids that one fit us. I mean, fit what we want to do with our culture, fit what we want to do with our program. And basically, I, I stole this from Coach Took is I want to make sure we take a guy that fits. And I want to be able to sign a – say, we, we want to be able to go out there and sign a roster every single year where, okay, we sign a quarterback – a good amount, these two, like maybe at least two running backs, this many receivers, this many tight ends, so on and so forth, going down your roster. And then you basically never get caught in the, okay, you never want to really want to recruit for need. You really, because then you can get recruit for want. Yeah. I, 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 though I talked to some coaches, man, they said like in the age of roster management, man, you got to kind of recruit all the way out like two, three years in advance. Oh, absolutely. Where, I mean, you have to just be prepared for early early departures, transfer portal guys, guys who may have to take a different route. And that's that's something that's interesting with, with Mississippi is that I think Mississippi and Kansas, a little bit in California, man, the JUCO circuit is so strong in those states. And they really, they really can be pipelines. You guys landed multiple guys out of East Mississippi this year in this recruiting class. Can you speak a little bit about how important that building relationships in the JUCO circuit in the state of Mississippi is for you guys and y'all's recruiting strategy? So biggest thing is this, again, coach, this is a relationship business. Um, one prime example, one of my really good friends in this whole industry is the DB coach at Southwest Mississippi Community College. Um, 
at the end of the day, we're always going to be recruiting this against each other for the same players. And then at the end of the day, hey, you might have got them this time, but I guarantee you either in a year or two, I'm going to get them back. That's the that's the double-edged sword at the end of the day. Um, the end, like We got to make sure we're taking care of our Mississippi kids because we want to build this thing from starting within Mississippi and then taking care of the Mississippi Delta. Then also we're going to be able to get some of those Mississippi kids back out of junior college as well. And when you look at the balance, you're the recruiting coordinator, so I know you and Coach Wade and some of the other coaches have probably talked about this. Do you guys have a, a target balance of a roster? Is it a certain percentage of guys you want to have from high school, from transfer portal, from JUCO, or is it just kind of year by year based on what you guys are, are looking to need? So coming into this situation here, every situation is always going to be unique. Every single class is always going to be unique in its own sense of, sense of form. Um, we got here – you look at the current roster. You we have to sit down and evaluate one. How many number? How many do we have at this position? This position? This position? Then we have to sit down as a staff and say, okay. Prime example: me being the running back coach, I want ten running backs on the roster. Well, on campus right now, well, we took the Caden Betts and Bobby Shanklin, who both are here right now, doing a great job for us right now. Um, that put me at six running backs for the spring. Well, then we out go out and sign two easily, two very very good running backs and Zamari and Kendall and DeWan Lacey. Um, so that put me at eight. Now I'm probably going to take two walk-on running backs, put me at 10. Um, that's just – you just got – each coach is going to be different in how – what they want their position profile to look like is in terms of height, weight, all that stuff, and then how much experience. And Now, can you get your roster flipped overnight through the portal? You can, but at some point you're going to have to win with – you got to make sure you're still doing being the coach and developing these kids – into the players you want them to be. Man, I I, I love that. I mean, I, that's probably the first number, man. A lot of people who probably aren't involved in athletics is probably like 10 running backs. That's a lot of running backs for a room, but, man, the depth is there. And looking at you as a coach, what do you look for in running backs? Is there certain measurables? Is there a certain character that you want in your room? Like, what all do you look for in running backs when you're on the recruiting trail? So I always broke down there's three different types of running backs. There's a small back, a medium back, and a big back. Now, the, there's qualities I look for in each and one, every single one of them. One of them's got to be physical. I mean, that's mentally tough, physically tough, because realistically, at the end of that, I want somebody that can run in between the tackles, and I want somebody that can step up and pass protection. I want somebody that can make produce on special teams in some form or fashion. Um, great vision and burst. Um, one kid that I remember vividly watching close up, up close and personal was a kid named Devin Singletary. Um, and ain't the fastest kid in the world, ain't the most twitchy kid in the world, but he's got great vision and patience. Very, very similar to Geno Hess at SEMO. Um, he ain't the fastest kid in the world, but he can, he's very, very patient, so knows how to set up his blocks, has great vision, can hit it downhill. Um, one thing I also like is can he catch the ball out of the backfield? I mean, you've got to be multifaceted. I don't want to have to take you out on third down just because you can't catch the ball. Um, and then the biggest thing at the end of the day is and I think a lot of people get tied up with this and the whole recruiting and how many stars this kid has and things like that. Is, does the kids fit our scheme? Because, I mean, okay, yeah, this kid's a four-star, five-star, but, yeah, he can't – he doesn't fit what we want to do. And then what's he going to do? I mean, he'll be a four- or five-star that ain't producing. Yeah, I, I love that. And when you look at – for, for me to, you know, being an offensive lineman, I, I, I have a little bit of a bias because I, I love the bigger backs because there's nothing more frustrating as an old lineman when you got a smaller back in there. You got your guy blocked, but he grabs him around your shoulder and he can't get away. Like I've, I've had that happen in high school and it's just, oh, it, it, it kills me. But man, Valley has had some really good running backs recently. Are we going to see a major shift in offensive scheme? Under, under yourself and Coach Wade, or are you guys going to run kind of a similar scheme that we've seen at Valley over the past few seasons? Well, the one thing is you're going you're to see a very, very balanced attack, I think. But I don't want to give out all the secrets just yeah. yet now. <laughs> um, I mean, I st we still want you guys to be able to see, and we want to be able to make sure, because we are going to surprise some people. I mean, we're going to be able to run the ball downhill, and we're going to be hand to make sure we handle everything in the passing game as well. But Again, I just don't want to give out all the secrets just yet. 
I, I love it. And as a running back coach, we see we do see a lot of different approaches. You talked about the three different types of back, what you want in each one of them. How much how much do you as a coach fundamentally like to rotate backs or do you like to have one dependable guy with two guys you can put in key situations or are you just a guy that's like, listen, whoever's hot that day is the guy who's going to is good is going to tote the rock. Um, so looking at me, look, if you look back at my time as a running back coach, at Arkansas Tech, I probably averaged three to four running backs a game consistently um everybody has a time and place that they can do a lot of different things because i mean i because my biggest thing at the end of the day as a coach i i I failed you as a coach if i put you and ask you to do something that i know you can't do um now we're also going to make sure we continue to work on those things and turn some of those weaknesses into strengths but at the end of the day i got to make sure i'm putting you in position to be successful yeah i i that that's true, and I, I think you see that sometimes at the high school level when you start looking at guys' film. Is that there's not a lot of depth in high school, and you're going to have to like you like even coaches at the collegiate level. You got to wear a lot of different hats, and I think sometimes people get caught up in ranking guys, saying this kid's not a very good prospect when he's out there doing something that it, it's, it makes zero sense for him to be Absolutely. doing in that situation. And the final few questions, coach, is just about Valley this year. When you look at yourself, the coaching staff, kind of the tone around the locker room, you guys hear all the all the media speculation. You guys hear all the critics. How motivated are you guys this year to prove everyone wrong? Like you said, surprise some people and just come and kick in the door year one and say this is a different time from Valley football and we're on the right directions. Well, here's the thing is hey, if we came in here saying, yeah, we just want to be competitive. We got the wrong mindset. Um, again, it's how we approach every single day. We hear, we hear everybody talking. We do. It's like, oh, it's, Valley's going to be Valley. Screw that. Set the tone. I mean, the biggest thing is we've uh, done a really good job in our offseason workout so far is making sure these kids, know, one, know how to finish, and we are going to get after some people. That's the one thing that we are going to do is we're going to be physical, we're going to hit people in the mouth, and then we're also going to be able to fin- make sure we finish you in the fourth quarter. Um you know, we, we sit here, we read all the press clippings, we hear about it all the time. But at the end of the day, it's the old Nick Saban quote, it's all rat poison. I, mean, <laughs> I love it. I, I love that quote too. The rat poison quote is amazing. And then the final <laughs> yes, the, the final question, coach, you know, you guys spring practice is coming quickly, man. I can't believe how fast the all season is moving. We were already through national signing day. Spring is gonna be here, the next thing, summer workouts, then we're looking at the season starting pretty soon, going into media days and everything. Are there some players in your room specifically that we need to know going into the season as household names that you think is going to be prime for a big 2023 season? Um, Off the top of my head right now, I, if, from what they've done alone right now in offseason workouts, in my position room alone, I'm very, very excited to see what Caden Betts and Bobby Shanklin can do. Um, now, I also have some older guys in Jared Wilson and Jacoby Thomas as well that have done a good job. A smaller guy named Fabian Fance has done a really good job as well. Um, the one that there's two kids out right now, I think are going to shock a lot of people. There's my two, oh, there's two freshmen coming in, and Dewan Lacey and Zamarion Kendall, um, two very very good backs right there. Can add a one two punch right there. And that being said, I think right there we're going to have a very very good room. I'm very very excited about it. I mean, I'm getting chills right now just thinking about it. And then April 15th is actually going to be our spring game. Um, we'd love everybody to come out and get a chance to see what the Delta Devils are going to look like. Coach, I'm, I'm so excited for the season, man. I, I, I'm when, when I saw you were on staff, man, I got really excited because, you know, me and you knew each other from the from the SEMO days, man. So, I, so congratulations on the new opportunity. I'm really looking forward to what you, Coach Wade, and the rest of the staff puts together. Guys, make sure to go follow Coach on social media. Coach, go ahead and plug, plug your social media. That way, any recruits watching this, anybody who wants to reach out to you can get a hold of you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So my Twitter is at underscore Coach Wyatt, C-O-A-C-H-W-Y-A-T-T. And my Instagram is Coach underscore Wyatt Anderson. Um, Yeah, guys, I greatly appreciate it. If you could also give a chance to follow our coaching staff as well. Our coaching staff here does a great job. Follow us on our Twitter page at Valley State FB. Um, Instagram is going to be the same exact thing. But, guys, I promise you this is a very, very exciting time to be in Mississippi Valley State. Very, very exciting time to be in the SWAC. Coach Wade has us going in the right direction, and we're gonna hear you're gonna hear this a lot. The time is now. 
Oh, I, 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 I was going to ask before we got off here what the what the quote was for this year. The time is now is great. Guys, Valley did launch a new Twitter page. Like Coach just dropped the, dropped the at handle. Go ahead and follow that, man. We got to get all these FCS programs, all these SWAC programs. We got to get the followers up on social media, not just follow you know the big name schools. So, man, make sure to go follow Valley's new Twitter page, Instagram, coming soon as well. But, guys, for Coach Anderson, for myself, and for the Blue Bloods, we are out for right now.